Father, we bless your name this morning. We lift you so high because of what you have been doing in our midst. We are grateful for the faithfulness that you have been showing to us as a church and as individual believers. We appreciate that you have not hidden anything that is necessary for us to have a complete taste of Calvary. You have not hidden that from us. And we appreciate, Lord, the way you lead us like little children. You take us by the hand and you are taking us on every time into the deeper depths of God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Oh Lord, we come this morning. This is one important thing that we need as believers in our preparation to meet the Lord. This is the only thing that the coming bridegroom will be looking for in the bride. Whatever else we have, Whatever else we lack, one thing is needful, and this is that which you are bringing to us this morning. Oh Lord, we pray you answer our prayer today. The prayer in the lips of the choir is the prayer on the lips of every serious believer who is having heaven in view. Lord, answer our prayers and make us white as snow, within, without, every way, in Jesus' name. No, it was possible, we wouldn't ask you. If your word did not say so, we wouldn't bother about it. If you didn't say people in scriptures who have tasted of these things, even in years gone by, we wouldn't, we wouldn't bother about it. We didn't see the seriousness of hand with which you handle matters of holiness and righteousness and purity of heart and life Lord then it wouldn't be an important thing to us but it is your most important thing and it's our quest we never have too much of it we can have too much of money we can have too much of every other thing in the world but, oh God we can never have enough of your nature um, duplicated in our lives Therefore, whatever level, whatever stage we are at, as individuals we are seated before your word this morning, take us higher and take us deeper and bring us closer to yourself in Jesus' name. And what you do in our heart will manifest in our mouth, will manifest in our speech, will manifest in our language, will manifest in our relationship with one another, in the church, at home, everywhere, in Jesus' name. If we do Ninu Ongo Boti and say, Nino Lode, Lai Kaluruko, Jesu, for the answer. I do pray about repeat it down. Jesus' name we pray. In Ruko, Jesu, Niagbadra. Amen. Amen. The message this morning is a very important message because it touches two major areas, two major departments, or two major members of our body, which is of paramount importance to the Almighty God. He said, and I said, he and in your world, you see, Pataki, Loko, Loko, Nitolipe. Of your work and one a young lady to say Pataki, Nino Arawa, Atipe, or to Jan to say Pataki, see your love or Lord Mary. Two nights ago, we were told, With the heart man believe it, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, I let me just say, As of one we pay, Peluaka, near any other thing, Babo, Suba Peluano, or nothing, Jawasi Bala. Well, then, with the heart man also believe it unto holiness and sanctification, and with the tongue. Confession is made of the possession of that blessing. Lord Nakana, Pelu Okaya Oka, Oni Nia Fing Bagbosi is what the Mima 
baka nani pelu aha pelu oro enu re oni o fi jewo nipa on ti o ti ri ba the message this morning a sanctified heart and a righteous tongue be la se ri iwa su ti owuro yi o da lori okan ti aso di mimo the word aha olododo the word and is a connecting word oro ti a pe ni ati o je oro ti sun kan ma and you see that this inseparable link between the heart and the tongue as you are you pe asopo o wa laarin aha ati ti okan christ says so Yes, you crazy. We bet. The scripture says so. We never saw that. Human experience confirming that there is an inseparable link between the heart and the tongue. We pray on to your soul, Mama. I want to ask you, let your wallah and your can. At your hand, and that the tongue is a reliable index of the heart. At we pray. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 34. No, Matthew chapter 12 verse 34. Matthew mm-hmm. Oh generation of vipers. How can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Ti se eniya buburu yi o ti se le soro rere nitori ninu opolopo hun inu li enu iso a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring it forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure bring it forth evil things eniya rere lati inu isura rere okan re ni mu ohun rere jade wa ati eniya buburu lati inu isura buburu ni mu ohun buburu jade wa the man there is used in a generic sense he talks about the man the woman the boy the girl a good boy or girl a good man or woman out of the good treasure of the heart will bring forth Good thing. Eniya ti adaruko nipa re ni biyi o so nipa iran ti eniyan lokunrin ati lobirin odomokunrin odomobirin rere agbalagbo okunrin agbalagbo okunrin rere o wa ma mu isura rere wa ninu okan re ninu ohun ti o jade wa kun re. Here the, the Bible tells us that the heart is a big reservoir and the mouth is the channel the pipe through which the thing that is contained in the reservoir flows out. Ni bi ni agbe so fun a wi pe okan je ibi ti an ko nkan jo si bakana ni aha o wa je opa the heart of man is deep okay none can know the content of the earth but that content flows out in an unceasing flow through the mouth through the tongue and so as the heart goes so goes the man as the tongue goes So goes the man. Gege bi ahan ba ti se ri na ni okan ti se ri. An evil tongue means an evil heart. Okan buburu o tu ma si ahan buburu. The righteous tongue points to righteous heart. Ahan olododo o nto ka si. Ori Davidi, ori Karun, ese ikesan. Let's see here the connectivity the the I'm broken between the tongue and the and the heart. Eje ki ari asopo ohun ti a ko le ya nipa laarin aha ati okan. In Psalm 5 and verse 9. Orin karun ese kesan. And as you look at all the scriptures I challenge you this morning to bring your uh, profession and uh, your testimony of being sanctified and bring it into the test uh, crucible of the Almighty God and check up how is it? As you look at your tongue, you look at the speech, you look at the language, you look at the general uh, utterances of the mouth in pressure, under pressure, in normal reactions and normal uh, events. How is it with your tongue and how is it with your heart? Be as it is in one way, say be belly and in that if he a a ye wa wo a wa i jeli je wa i saw the mima wa e get the onti se inga de. Nenuwa, nipa ti abasun wa kan giri, nipa ti abagun wa kese, on ti on ti enu wa jade, nipa ti aye wa lo dede, ala ti fi yewo, ya ti sinka. Psalm 5 and verse 9. Ori ka won ese kesun. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Nitori ti o ti to kan ko si le enu eni kan ni wa. About the wicked of sinner. Eleyin so nipa eniyan buburu ese. There is no faithfulness in their mouth. Ko si o ti to kan kan le enu eni kan ninu wa. Psalm is why? Why was there no faithfulness in their mouth? Ki wa lo de olorin David ti o fi si o ti to kan kan enu Because their inward part is very wickedness itself. So then, evil heart, evil speech. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongues. In Psalm 78. Ikejidini 
See. They flattered with their mouth, they lied with their tongue. Why did they do that? 37 says, because for their heart was not right within, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. That, that means when you find flattery in the mouth, you find lying in the mouth, it's only telling us the heart of that individual is not right with God. And like, uh, you know that man, uh, Simeon, uh, Simon the sorcerer, and then the, the Peter said, this is the wickedness of your heart and he says repent of it because your heart is not right with God that means that man is not born again that man does not know God therefore there will be lying in the mouth there will be flattery in the mouth that means that there is flattery in the Speaking good of men to gain advantage, you do not find it in the mouth of a believer. In Proverbs chapter 24, Proverbs chapter 24 verse, uh, verse 2, For their heart studied destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Don't you see there that connection, the heart and the tongue? Come over to the New Testament. Yes. You see what Jesus said where we read the other time, Matthew 12, 34. Out of the abundance of the, the mouth speaker. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 uh, This is a very important verse of scripture It says Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. I want you to notice the sequence or the chain that is brought to us into our attention there. It's telling us that the invisible bitterness in the heart. The invisible wrath in the heart, that is, at least as far as men is concerned, the bitterness is not visible. The wrath is not visible. The anger is not visible. The malice is not visible. The turmoil in there is not visible. But all those become visible in the evil speaking that naturally follows. And there's bitterness in the heart. It will come out through the evil speaking in the mouth. When there is wrath in the heart. And that rests in the bosom of fools. It's in the heart. Then the clamor, that's you know, the noise in the heart. The tumult in the heart. All that will come out. Out, uh, boiling like it's water inside there. Uh, a kettle, you put it on the uh, on the fire, and then it's boiling and boiling and boiling and boiling. And if you don't uh, remove the fire uh, long time, the thing will burst open, and then you will know this thing is boiling. <laughs> So you find that God understands what is in the heart will come out from the mouth. That why God begins his relationship with man not in the mouth but in the heart. Jesus rebuked some people in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15 verse 7. He, 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 he challenged them. He rebuked them. He, he said you people see. You think you are worshipping God. But look at your mouth and look at your heart. They don't agree together. In Matthew 15 verse 7 Ye hypocrites Well the desires prophesy of you Saying these people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth And honor me with their lips But their heart is far from me And because of that That worship is vain In vain they do worship me Enya 
Sugba kan won jinan si mi nitori die yi kini o wa sele sugba la fan ni won teri ba fun mi won fi ofe niyan ko ni fun eko aso ni esin won oh, says people if i look at your worship and i look at your profession and i look at your testimony and i look at your relationship with god and what i see there is that your mouth is near but your heart is far it is vain religion oh so we pe tin ba wo eyin awon eyin eyin eyan won yi mo wo esin yi mo ri bi pe e nfi aha yin so ma mi sugba sa o kan yin jinan si mi eleyi lo wa mu ki gbogbo isin yin pata ko ji asan e the heart is unclean but the mouth seems to be talking some hypocritical words that look clean then jesus says it's vain worship bi o bi aha to ba so oro rere sugba to ja bi pe o kan o dara o wa da bi alaga ba gebe jesus christ wa so wi pe gbogbo isin yin o ji asan exactly the same thing james said in james 126 he said if any man seem to be religious among you any man seem to be holy sanctified or sanctimonious among you and he says that man he but he does not bridle his tongue but he's deceiving his heart he says that man's religion that man's religion is vain oh kana ni jacob so ninu we jacob ori kini ese ikerin di ni ogbon ni o so pe eni kerinu yin ti o bada bi eni te ko nfa to nse sin to nse sin re fun olorun oni sugbon ti koko ahan re ni ijanu oni isin eni be asan ni it shows you then that your worship is not just the words you speak it's the content of the heart and your worship is not just the content of your heart it's the words you speak everything together make for the totality of your religion and relationship with god eleyi wa sumo si bi pe isin re o da lori o te ko re ti enu re so jade ki sele yi nikan isin re o da lori un ti enu re so jade ati gbe okan re ti se je mimo o gbogbo e lapapo oni o wa so iba se po wa pelu olorun olodumare when god sanctifies the heart the tongue is one of the uh, first to signal what god has done nigba ti olorun ba so kan di mimo aha oni o koko so on ti olorun ti se may god come of a sanctified heart is a righteous tongue that becomes evident ikan lara on ti a fi mo kan ti a ti so di mimo oni aha ododo e te ko nje jade that the total uniform testimony of scripture eleyi si wa je ifidimule kan so so te pe ibo mi ma dole lori and i know emi si ma god is here this day olorun wa ni si ro ni fire la en ti so ni di mimo god purifies the heart and the tongue and it is And he's coming this morning as we hear the word. With the scapel from heaven. With the scapel, with the uh, operating instrument from heaven. So as to cleanse whatever is there that defiles our worship, that pollutes our worship, and that destroys our relationship. If there is no sanctification, if there is no purity of heart, if there is no purity of language. Then worship and fellowship will be destroyed. Biko basi iso di mima. Biko basi iwa fufu. Aje wi gogo isesi. Ati on gogo ti anse. Aja sorry asani. If I don't pray to God, O Lord, purge my heart, cleanse my heart, sanctify my heart, I will soon become a canker in the body that will be causing trouble and causing difficulty and causing discord. And then through me, the root of bitterness will spread and many will be defiled. Biye miko bagba dura ki o luwa so di so mi di mima so kan mi di fufu. Lai pe lai jina ma wa di kokoro aje ni run. E ti nba ile je e te pe nda ija sile kakiri. And if that happens, then God will not be happy because I will be defiling the body of Christ. Bi eleyi ba wa sele inu Olorun oni dun si mi tori bi pe emu yo ma ba ra Christi je ni. My brothers and sisters. Ma ra kun ati ara bi mi. Pure heart is sanctified that is a possibility. O kan mi ma o kan ti a so di mi ma o se se. Eleyi ni koko possibility of possessing a sanctified lati ri gba okan ta so di mi ma the possibility nowadays many believers even in the holiness circle they are almost beginning to doubt the possibility of being sanctified in her si se se re ga ninu awon te pe won gba iwe mi mo gbo awon eniyan awon eniyan olorun won ti en se ye meji re pe boya lo ti e se se fun eniyan lati le so kan re di mi ma point number 2 purity of life and language after sanctification koko ikeji aye mi ma ati oro ti a so di mi ma After sanctification. Let me so the minimum. And point number three. Koko iketa. Paying the price for sanctification. Sisa idiye lele idiye le iso the minimum. Paying the price. Sisa iso idiye. Paying the price. Sisa idiye lele. The problem with many is that they have not paid the price. Onti o sele wa la tu wa na yo kolo koni wipe amu se tala ti se ye le. Instead of be excusing, well, I don't know. That's my nature. I just don't know why it's like that. But that's the way we are in our family. That's the way I'm made. And I think God does not say after we are saved, He obliterates our personality. 
me. No, it does not. But it puts its nature inside us. And its nature finds expression in our personality. And that affects our speech. In point number one, the possibility of possessing a sanctified heart. And I want you to start from the realm of the possible today. Don't start considering the sanctification message from the realm of the impossible. If you start out thinking it is not possible, you will end up Concluding, it is not possible. Mufeki o bere, lati ibipe o seese. Masi bere, lati ibipe koni seese. Ti oba bere, iso di mima, ni pa pe koni seese. Lenye o re, yinimba to wak pari re. Ori da di ibipe koni seese. And there are churches and there are preachers that are guilty. They say, no, how can you say somebody can be holy? Only God is holy. We are all sinners. And that, and they think by saying that they are being humble. They say, we are, we are all sinners. Only God is holy. Nobody can be holy. And those who say we are going to be holy, they are, they are liars. And they will be arguing and fighting. Instead of saying, God, this thing, is it for me? Can you do it in me? I want to believe. And then God will see their faith and they will do it in there. They start out with impossibility. They end up with impossibility. <laughs> God himself will soon realize that this uh, sanctification and this holiness is not possible for his people and that somehow God when he sees this thing is not possible will lower the standard for everybody because you know we cannot attain unto it therefore God will bring the standard down and then everybody will qualify no and those who know God they know that God does not go back on his words he said I will not alter the things that have proceeded out of my mouth. And if that is the case, whatever has proceeded from the mouth of God concerning a sanctified heart, a pure heart, if I could show you a word or two in the Bible from the mouth of God on holiness and on the necessity of it, then God will not alter whatever has proceeded out of his mouth. The first Chapter 4. Thessalonians chapter 4. Thessalonians, Thessalonians, they were believers. We are coming from chapter 1. We see that these people, the gospel came to them. We see that these people, they were sinners before. They have received the word of God with much affliction. They have suffered persecution for Christ. They themselves were preaching the gospel. The word of God is standing out in Macedonia and Achaia through there. And those Macedonians, they were giving testimony of the change of life in these Thessalonian Christians. They were telling the whole world that these Thessalonians, they were serving idols before, but they have turned to God now. They were sinners before, now they were saved. They were, they were righteous before, but now they have become righteous. And they were even waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven. The experience of the rapture we had about yesterday, they were waiting for that. They have been delivered from the wrath that is to come. The one that will come upon the sons of disobedience. These were believers. They were like little children in the Lord. And God was bringing them up. I even told them, he said, you are crowned before the throne of God. These people, they were living for God. Now Paul now said in chapter 4 verse 3, he said, they were their brothers and sisters. He said, this 
is the will of God. Oh, ni ni tori e ni fe Olorun. Even your sanctification. Ah, ni wi wa ni ni ma ni. My brothers and sisters. Oh, wi pe ara kun ni ata. I told you a lot of what God has done in your life. Opo nkan ni mo di so ni tolo ni se na ye ni. Let me show you still a father will of God. Must be better to get so see what you see. Oh, God is the will of God for you to be sanctified. Oh, so for wi pe e ni fe Olorun ni wi wa ni wa mi ma wa. Today God is going to show us what does that sanctification mean in that context. No ni yo Olorun o si fi han wa kin ni so di mi ma tu mas ni no di kika yi. Chapter 5 verse 23. Ni ori kan we say keta te lo ko. Ni kan pray for them. Oh, yes, you know, I'm concluding my letter to you. Oh, ni nje mo wi pe ni pari iwe ti mo nko si. And in this letter I spoke to you about persecution. Ni nu we yi mo si ti so nipa elo ni ti ni. I told you about pastoral ministry. Mo ti so nipa se na se oni wa. About Timothy to you. Moti fu ni eri ni ba Timothy. I told you that we are going to suffer affliction. Moti suffer ni pe agi ya. I even told you about the rapture and the coming of the Lord. Moti adi suffer ni pe agi ba so ki ati ni bibolu a. I told you about sanctification. Moti suffer ni pe agi so di mi ma. He said, How do I conclude my letter? Wa ni ba oni ti eti wa pari. What is the most important thing I need to re-emphasize before I close the letter? Kini kana dosi kwa ba kiti mo na ti tenu ma kito pari we. Oh, he got into prayer. Oh, I bet ni pe agi. He said, God. Oh, ni olu. I am praying for you, Thessalonian believers. Oh, God. In verse twenty-three, chapter five. He said, Keta ni logo ni ba. He said, The very God of peace. Oh, ni ki olu. Sanctify you holy. There is a very strong emphatic language in that verse. Ali oro atu atu tusu. 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 Ki Olorun Alaafia ti kara re ki o so yin di mi ma o le so yin e No you said you will do it totally Suppose we just say you will not settle for half sanctification Oh wa ni do lori abo e so di mi You will not settle for skin deep sanctification Oh ni do lori e so di mi ma tarala You will not settle for sanctification that is there when there nobody offends you when there is no nothing happening between you and another brother nothing happening between you and another sister say oh praise the lord i am sanctified wait until there is offense Oh ni wa do lori so di mi ma to ja wi pe ko ni si nkan kan te ko sele laarin wa ti arakunrin tabi laarin wa ti arabinle sugbansa duro na je ki nkan ko sele Larry, what? Tell me. Wait until unjust treatment is meted out to you. Eh, Jackie, I do. What about me? I need red one. Wait until it appears you are cheated. Jack, Jack, I do this, but today I go for Barry again. Then we know whether you are really sanctified. I know, love me, but I need to tell you this. 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 I need to tell I pray God your whole that's the third emphatic language your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless. Oni o ngba dura pe ki a si pa o emi ati okan ati ara yin mo pata pata le aibuku. He could have said I pray your I pray God your spirit soul and body and that to be okay he said not part of it not two of them but your total man Your inner man, your outer man, every part of you will completely and wholly will be preserved blameless. Oro iso pata pata mi tulele yo. We only so we pay kia pa emi ati oka ati arani ma. Only zuma ati emi yo ati oka yo ati arani yo kiti labo pata pata la o pa mani la buko. And you see the way he explained. He said it starts from your spirit, your inner man. It starts from your heart, the invisible part of you, that part of you that touches God, that have relationship with God. It begins from that, then it begins to come out. It comes to your mind, it comes to your brain, it comes to your will, it comes to your emotion, it comes to your feelings, it comes to all the psychological part of you. Then it leaves that place. It comes to your body, it comes to your eyes, it comes to your mouth, it comes to your hand, it comes to every part of you. It sanctifies you wholly. You want to go to the bed? Oh, bed. Let's see. It's about the food you eat. Your body is empty. At the cure, at the organ. Oh, bed. Your body is full. 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 Your
Uh, I like the water we drink is unclean. Oh, metan, oh, I mean, the air we breathe is unclean. I've mean, I mean, yeah. food we eat is unclean. Oh, metan, yeah, I mean, everything about us is unclean. Oh, metan, yeah, I mean, Therefore, we cannot be clean. Mm -hmm, that's not good. It is alone. It's like a little child goes to the bathroom. You know that the Amadeus does not see And then he washes just the front part of his body. And then the rest of the body is gone because it's dirty. Any long when not even the front part that he washes, he didn't do it well. Why you got those bones for Cosida? The nails they are very dirty and black. A cow wore it. Any one dirty. The teeth he didn't clean the teeth. Any like for every part even in the if you look into the socket of the eye you see all this secretion there. So bad what you like? It pisses while you. And then he comes out of the bathroom. Oh, he says, "Mommy, I finished bathing. Where's my food?" And then the mommy says, Come here, let me inspect you. And then the mommy says, Let me see your finger. You see the finger is very dirty. Then he says, Look at your eye. Look at the secretion in your eye. Uh, he says, let, Look at your feet. You didn't wash your feet. Oh, look at the back of your feet. Very dirty. Follow me to the bathroom again. Then the mother takes that child and scrubs the whole thing from top to bottom. He says, Open your mouth. The thing is very dirty. He gets something and he cleans the whole inside. He says, Let me see your tongue. And he says, So white. He says, look at this donkey, he washes everything out. He says, bring your fingernails. He takes blade, she takes blade and clean, you know, cuts all those things off. Then after he has finished that, he says, you can go and sit down and eat your food now. That is what God does. What do you think? God has created the universe. That created sun. That makes me white. With so glory, with so purity, with so righteousness, with so cleanness. What makes you think God cannot put your hand? What you think I cannot cleanse you inside? Oh, you say, well, it's not possible. Your whole spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless. It says, that will be until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, while waiting for him, we are clean. We are clean. It's not when he comes that we shall be holy. He does it until he's coming. Verse 24 says, with men this is impossible but not with God for with God nothing shall be impossible it says faithfully see that calleth you who also will do it he will, he will do it he will do it God does not go back on his word without holiness no man shall see the Lord Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 young man without holiness no man shall see the Lord no matter, who you are, no matter who you are, a young or old, go yard, but abode, educated or illiterate, keep alive for CSC or whatever church you go without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Holiness is uh, holiness of heart, holiness of life, holiness of soul, holiness of body. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I know you want to see God. You want to see him on the final day. We were told yesterday by the pastor. He said, We shall see him, we shall be like him, we shall see him as he is. The one we are hearing of, you know, by word of mouth now. The one we are seeing by faith now. You want to see him face to face. Without any veil on your face. You want to see God plainly like this. Or don't you want to see God? I said, don't you want to see God? Oh, to see God like this. And then he's seated on his throne. And your eyes are qualified to see that glory now. Now no man can see him. But then we shall see him face to face. And he will talk mouth to mouth. And he will say, come and sit by my side here. I don't think you are coming to church to miss that kind of experience. If that would then be, be your case. Then you want to see God. Then here on earth, you need to pray and pay the price and get your heart purified and cleansed. Have you forgotten? If you see
Where some of these people were to be brought before the kings of the world. They made special preparation for them. Remember Genesis? Genesis. Joseph was coming from prison. Joseph, oh And as he was coming from prison like that, he was to stand before the king, uh, the king of Egypt. The Bible says the chef said quickly, they cleaned him up, they prepared him because you cannot come to the presence of that king anyhow, just anyhow. The Bible says the chef said quickly, they cleaned him up, they prepared him because you cannot come to the presence of that king anyhow, just anyhow. And then you remember Esther. And they told those ladies before they were to go before the king, they would do this special preparation for months and months and months, so that they'll be qualified to enter into the courts of the king of this world as well as ordinary man. Oh, see, not yesterday, you know, but they have to go five to buy any other other route. Oh, can you want to go to one? Oh, so or do only want to go to one? Did you want to see one of me? You remember Daniel? Oh, not that. Why was to come before the king? They were to go before the king. They were to go specially, and all those children, they were to be ready. They were under special training. They didn't want to want to see one. They say, Mister King, Mister Jack, they were to be ready. Go, I want to go back. What do you think? You want to come before the King of Kings? Before the Most High, Holy God. The God who is of pure eyes, whose eyes are so pure they cannot behold iniquity. And you want to go before His presence without a clean heart, without a pure life, without a pure body, without a pure soul, a pure heart, pure will, pure emotions, pure feelings, pure thoughts. How do you think you can stand? Oh, I fell asleep while you were lying. Oh, can't fall for it. Be a ye mi ma, it be a ye fun fun. Oh, can't ati ma la la ti o je mi ma to ni. Oh, Lord, why don't you why you there? Why the message is important? You read it. Take what you say. I say if you say, I pray the Lord will reach down to your heart and clean every heart this morning. In Jesus name. But do I pray, Lord, on your call, let us know how to pray. You see what's on the book? Did you manage to call? Now this experience of sanctification. You read it. So the matter is on the parish. I told you there is a twofold. Maybe I need to tell you there is a twofold part of it. Second Corinthians chapter seven. Second Corinthians chapter seven. And in verse one, it says, "Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God." Now listen to me here. Now. Uh, there are passages of scripture. That presents sanctification as if it is entirely the work of God, and there are other passages of Scripture that present the sanctification as if it is entirely the work of man. What do you do then? You take the two together. The one that talks about sanctification be the work of God. I've read to you Second Corinthians, uh, Second, uh, Second First Thessalonians five twenty three. God of peace Himself sanctify you. You take that on one hand, then you go to the other side. The passages that say it's like you are the one that does it because you have a part to play. You take the two together. God does His part. You do your part, and the miracle is performed. <laughs> ニュースを見ましたそのパレ、一緒にロンクレカドソニー、あ、ケダツリカ、犬を植えて、サウニカキに、オリイケニ、エセカイニ、エケタリニ、オグニベ、イクロンオロマラフィアティカラレ、ユ
Lord your God will say, I have not finished. There are still some propensity, some tendencies in the heart. Although you are born again. Although you are not committing those sins outwardly again, there are some the source. It's still there. I need to dry the source of that problem. The Lord will circumcise your heart. He will take away the first king. That thing that is not good. The thing that is not right. That is there by birth, by inheritance. He takes that thing from your heart. He performs that kind of operation. He removes the root of sin. The spring. Where all the things that you are doing outside. Where they are coming from. Where all the external sins are coming from. He goes to the source, he cleans that source so that what is coming out from there will be clean now. Your soul. When you are praying for salvation, you confess your sins that you have committed. But now you go beyond that. And you say, God, those sins that I commit outside, I first of all think of them inside. Now I want you to help me from that source, to clean that source, so that the, uh, the outflow will be clean as well. So brothers and sisters, we are, we are the people who have problem with that today. Even the Old Testament people, they didn't have that problem at all. They understood, they understood what you are saying. They understood that what you are doing outside is different. Where you planned it, the factory where you developed it, where you perfected it, is another thing different. They understood. No, what I mean is that they understood that the evil that you do outside is one thing. And they understood that the factory where that evil was manufactured, where it was developed, where it was built up and perfected before it was brought out, is another thing. In, in Psalm 51. Psalm 51. This man had committed sin. Fornication, adultery. He had gone to another person's wife. And he was not repenting. He was asking God for pardon. He was asking God for forgiveness and cleansing. And he noticed the language that he used. When he was talking about uh, praying for forgiveness, for salvation in our language today. Verse 1, I will not read everything, please just follow me. Verse 1, it says, blot out my transgression. Verse 2, it says, wash me from my iniquity. Then, he began to get more serious in his prayer. In verse 9, he said, hide your face from my sin. Blot all my iniquities out. And he said, God, I realize. Before I went to commit adultery with that woman, he did the thought of evil. The thought of uncleanness. Satan put it in my heart, and my heart the thought germinated. And because my heart was fertile for that uncleanness, because of the tendency inside it itself, that was why the thing began to began to develop and develop until I committed the sin. So he said, God, after you have forgiven my sin of adultery, the one I did with that woman, he said, God, that is not the end. In verse 10, he says, God, I need you to recreate me again. Don't you see that language? He said, you need to create it. Not just to blot out, not just to wash, to create a new one and put a new spirit inside me. That's how to pray. But the same bad word, the call on go down to see no one. He says, Lord, do it and renew a right spirit within me. That's exactly what God promised in Ezekiel 36. 
to se le re ninu ezekiel ori ikerin dini ogojiel chapter 30 say so you will know this thing is not just a joke it's reality o wa ri bi ati se nse ipile re ki o ba le mo pe ohun ti an so nipa re ki kan si awada o je ohun to se se now in ezekiel 36 verse 26 Ezekiel ori ikerin dini ogoji ese ikerin dini ogbon heart also will i give you emi o fi okan ti tun fun yin pelu o what did david pray for kin david n gbagbo fun he said create a clean heart a new heart in me o god oni da okan ti tun si mi oluni there was the one that he could easily yield to the devil the one that was prone to sin the one that was always tending towards the downward the bestial, bestial nature in man the animal nature in man he said god i don't want that kind of heart sister is that not the heart you have been crying all about brother is that not all the heart you have been crying about that you see that you cannot go all the way with god it's like there's a ceiling on your spiritual life when you want to get high and go up the thing pulls you down again that downward tendency is always there that root, that Adamic nature is always there. That will not allow you to go all out in your relationship with God. And then you go before God today. You said, create a clean heart in me. Says, yes, yes, that's what I said I will do. I will give you a new heart. A new heart. How many of us want a new heart? A new heart, a new heart, a new heart, from, new heart from God. Not from man. He gives a new heart. Put down your hand. And then he says, not just a new heart, the one that pumps blood. He says, I'm talking about a new spirit, a new man. Will I put within you? in doing that i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh the stony heart that is hard the stony heart that is difficult the stony heart that is rebellious the stony heart that is self-willed the stony heart that is self-conceited the stony heart that is very very incorrect and then the self will the stony heart that is not sensitive to God the stony heart that is not touched by the word of God the stony heart that is not communing with God the stony heart that cannot communicate with heaven I take that stony heart away from you I know that I pack it aside in one corner somewhere that's what some people say they say when God sanctifies you you pack your, your one nature aside then he puts another the two of them are together no sir i take out the stony heart out of your flesh and i will then replace it with a heart of flesh changes your heart i pray god will change your heart today the heart is why you cannot go to heaven like this that's why jesus came Husbands love your wife. As Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the world. That he might purify that heart and present that body, that church, a glorious church. That has no spot. No wrinkles. Or any of such things. But that it should be holy and without blemish. That is the miracle of sanctification. And it takes place in the heart. The filthiness of the spirit is taken away. And your own heart knows its own plague. And your heart knows its own plague. Do you know what is there? You know all the struggling. You know the things that are there that are fighting against God and righteousness in your heart. You drag that thing like a criminal to the throne of God. You report them to God. 
God deals with them and he removes that nature of sin away from your heart and gives you a new heart that loves God that loves righteousness that loves holiness a new heart that will not cooperate with the devil not that, you, that heart will not be tempted but Satan does not find cooperation in that heart and when he comes oh, he finds that heart not conducive not fertile for any evil that he's bringing that heart that is sensitive to the voice of the spirit that's the removal of the filthiness of the spirit but now there's another part to it in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 here this passage talks about sanctification but in another way he's talking about here the sanctification of the body but remember, the whole spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and in verse 3, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. That you should abstain from fornication. Then he says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel, his bodily member in sanctification and honor when, when God sanctifies your heart it affects your body too many people don't know that there is a possessing of your bodily members in holiness in honor there is a separating of your body for holy uses there is a removal of the filthiness of the flesh you see when you are born again there is some measure of holiness in your life you don't go out and commit sin again when you are sanctified you are cleansed from within and it affects your body there is a control on the bodily member it helps you to possess your bodily members in sanctification and honor there is an evident outward holiness that results from a sanctified heart in other words you say you are sanctified it affects the way you use your eyes it affects your mouth it affects your hands yeah, it affects everything about you it affects your looks it affects your language it affects your dressing it affects your association it affects your conversation conversation. When you are sanctified, you possess your members in sanctification and honor. Sanctification of heart is not a license for careless living. That I'm sanctified. Therefore, I can you look at whatever I like. You are sanctified. And then you see all the almana, calendar, and the, all those people pictures of naked women in your house on your wall and every time you are looking at the date of the day you are looking at an unclean thing sanctified but the picture of your former girlfriend is still in your album and the way she dressed with all the nakedness and everything and the one you took with her and the two of you in a very very compromising posture everything is there 
then you say you are sanctified. Oti ni so di mi ma sugma sa. Oto si ni photo eni te joman de se papo ni biti o man ko photo resi ni papo ti o baba wo bo bo iwa o te pe o eni ni te pe ba ya photo re o ma wo tabi do na te pe ba ya jo jo ya photo papo ni o na te pe ko ba iwe mi ma mu oto si ma wo si zako di ni so di mi ma. Sanctified, but all the things you watch when you sit in front of the television, all those unclean things, all those immoral things, all those suggestive pictures, and you sit in front of that. Sanctify, but look at this one. The possessing of your members in sanctification and honor. Sanctify, but look at the dress you wear. Yeah, you say you are sanctified, but your dress is so, such a decent and such a, it's not the type that befits a child of the king of heaven. And when you are a child of God, you possess your vessel, your bodily members in sanctity. You say, My body belongs to Jesus. It's not for the lust of any man, it's not for the lust of any woman. Therefore, I don't expose my body in this indecent way that will be, uh, you know, uh, some people will be getting sinful pleasure from that. Can you tell me you are sanctified and here you are, you are a woman, you wear this kind of dress that you know, everybody that sees you, they know what you are thinking in your heart, they know what you want to get, they know what you are looking for, because the dress is so... Is it exposes your body or the thing is so tight like this that you know you, you struggle to enter into that dress it's too sh- small for you you should have stopped using that dress five years ago ten years ago but you know because of the unclean thing you struggled and then the thing is so tight like that and you have to be very careful so it doesn't tear to pieces on your body and then you tell me oh don't worry i'm sanctified in heart where did you get that sanctification your spirit soul and body will be blameless O se so fun mi pe o ti ni so di mo iwo to je bi pe nigba ti o ba wu aso aso ni wo ho lo nwo aso te pe ko ni gbe ni ro aso te pe ko ba oro olorun mu lo wo igba miran o ti e tun wo so mi e te pe se o ti e tin rin o fun olopopopo bo ye pe nigba to ba wo gan se lo se lo ti ra ka lati wo le nigba to ba wo tan o ni lati ma ki esara ko ma faya mo lara iwo mo wo to so ko wa ti ni so di mo bo lo so ko ti so ni so ni mo ninu uru wa bi eleyi o so wi pe e so di mo to kan ni pe ko ba ti to di ara mu si so di mo ta ni pare yi ati tokan ati to di ara o ba wo yo 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 we you sanctify then you wear dress then after you have sewn the dress properly and uh, you know the good way long and everything then you take blade and tear it on the left and tear it on the right and tear it in the front and tear it at the back and tear it on the side and tear it in the chest and tear it everywhere as if you are fighting with the tailor that did it and when you do that then you say you are sanctified we are sanctification in that iwo to so po ti ni so di mi ma aso to do da te po lo ran pe lodo tailor aran so ta si bo ran dada ngo mo dele lo ba mu abefele bo se ya ni well, maybe it's the tailor that does it himself or okay, so because oh, that's what you told him. Oh, see, legend, eh, oh, Luna, so can look for a set of the pen to some book of boss in here. Oh, game, what you, oh, gay leg, 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 oh, gay oh, gay leg, 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 oh, gay Peter chapter 1 Peter there is this evident purity of life and of language that follows after you are sanctified in the heart iwa mi mo yi o wa te pa le foju ri leyin igba te po ba ti ni so di mo ti okan do you see that you say you are sanctified it affects your tongue o so po ti ni so di mi mo yo ni pa lori ahan re it affects the words you speak yo ni pa lori oro to nte nu re it affects the language of your mouth yo ni pa lori awon e de enu re the sanctification of your body your tongue is part of your body so di mi mo ti ara wa ni be ahan o je okan lara iya ra re a lot of damage has been done to the holiness message by the pervasive unholiness of many holiness professors. Peter chapter 1 verse 14 and uh, I'm talking about point number 2 now purity of life and language after sanctification 
iwa mima iwa fufun ara ati isodi mima leyin isodi as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance but as he which had called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy ese kerin la bi awon ele ti omo le ai fi ara yin dasa bi ifeku fe atijo ninu ai mo yin sugbon gege bi eni ti o pe yin ti je mimo be eni ke yin na si je mimo ninu iwa iwa yin gbogbo nitori ati ko pe e je mimo nitori ti emi je mimo in all manner of conversation when you are sanctified there is holiness of life and there is holiness of language you will find that somebody a woman says I'm sanctified but there is no bridle on the tongue you are not sanctified until there is a bridling of the tongue Psalm 39 verse 1 39 one. I said I will take it to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Yes, you know me. Keep me pure, my fear, and me say. Emiofi janu kuara milienu nikbati ni abuburu ban beni wajumi. Isaiah chapter six. Wuli Isaiah uri kefa. In verse five. I say. When Isaiah saw the glory of God. Nikbati wuli Isaiah uri ogolo. He was high and lifted up. Ori giga giga. And his strength filled the temple. Bana ni anwa inyari taku. And he saw the angels crying, holy, holy, holy. Osi wari anwa ge itu anke mi mama. Then he said in verse five, Woe is me for I am undone. Nikbana loa swani ese kanukwe. Nikbana ni mowi pe beni fumi. I am a man of unclean lips. I knew, he knew that something needed to be done in the heart. He knew that the tongue and the heart they are inseparably linked. So he cried unto God. He said, "God, my my lips are not clean." my heart are not clean it's not clean and then in verse 6 he, when he cried like that God sent an angel and he took a coal from the altar of God and he laid it upon the mouth external as a sign as a symbol of the internal cleansing that was to be done he said this has touched your lips so your iniquity is taken away. So your sin in the singular sin is poured. That's the sin nature, the root purged. As if for a sereno, a se, lonely and the only or a yokasoso, only as if for no. So when God sanctifies our hearts, but your lono bass walk and what the amount of the abundance of the other mouth speaks, and there will be no evil speaking in the mouth. Banana conisi, a robu, of course, it's not when you are sanctified that you stop speaking evil only. He got a sending but take my bats so I didn't money. Class, that directly, but I'm telling you that the holiness of language that began when you are saved it continues after you are sanctified. And there will be no evil speaking. When you are born again, child of God, you will not tell lies because that's an evidence of not being born again. But after you are sanctified, you, know, you sometimes you may, see the, you may still have this on this kind of criticism, a critical kind of tongue, you know, in your mouth. Oma, 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 Kenny, take Oma, so to you, darling. Although you are born again, but you see that all the time you're always critical. This is that, that is the other thing, and all the time you are always finding fault with this and finding fault with that. Today we pray, Lenny, but to be a to be old, you are a paper, you are a hundred, so no man catches, hello, me, Lono. Now, when God touches you and purges that heart and removes that harshness from the heart, then your language becomes gracious. You got your Lono Bawa, Fork, or to well, man, to well, my clothes, you buy one. All the biting speech, all the stormy language, all the boisterous language, everything is taken away. All the talkativeness, everything is taken away. All the loose speaking, everything is taken away. All the careless language, everything is taken away. 
there is a kind of sometimes you find a believer there is a strange quietness not the quietness that the bible commands but there is this kind of strange aloofness a strange quietness in that person and it is a result of lack of a sanctified heart when you are sanctified that strange quietness is taken away that's the one our brother preaching yesterday was talking about that you just find that this fellow he, he or she becomes strangely quiet yeah, and it's not the quietness of a disciplined believer. It's the quietness of a bitter believer. The quietness of an offended believer. The quietness of, uh, of a malicious person. You find that in that heart. When God purges purge, all that kind of strength, quietness is gone. Here you are child of God. Graciously and there is grace and there is mercy and there is love in your tongue. Because your heart is completely purged of every evil. Joma. I want to know why. So they pay it to me. Baka sa dake jeni. I dake jeni to sa jeji. So they pay me kasa dake jeni. I dake jeni to they pay. Kusa ni kento mani pay. Bi adama ni. Waka sa dadrowa. Kisi i dake jeni pay. Inya tini so di masuma. I dake jeni i koro to wa ni noka. I dake jeni ni to li pay. Waka tisi o kato lo disi. Aka sa dake jeni yo madase. Ega bi amu duwa kutama tisi so lani ya. Ni ba tiwa se wa su. I dake jeni we lei. Elei ifi o ipe o kanya koti ni so di masuma. Ni ba tiwa kaba tini so di mima. Koni si ru da keje be ni be sugbon sa iru okan be yo ko fun ori ofe yo ma tu jade pelu ori ofe olorun lati buku ni lati saye ni re you family you will see that kind of quietness o si le die bi kan o ri ru da keje be everything is silent but it is silence of the graveyard sugbon e wa ri pe mo gbo ata lo da keje sugbon o je da keje iboji o they don't offend one another because they don't even discuss they don't even cross one another ah won yin se ra won to ri pe kini won yin ti e tin won ta ba na why they are just there and there is this kind of quietness between them o ko ati ya won ga sa and that kind of thing is very tense. And we say we are sanctified. Ah, in the church. In the district church. You find that kind of strange quietness. Everything is so tense. The air is thick with, uh, I don't know what to call it. Very thick with distrust. And you, you get there, you say, why is everything quiet like this? It is because the believers there don't know the grace of God. So you find they are enduring one another, they are not enjoying one another. Don't fight, but they don't uh, talk either. They don't. They are not friends, but they are not enemies. They, they just avoid one another. Look at them when they are discussing. They cannot look one another in the face. Hey, they cannot look square, a brother, in the face, a sister in the face, and discuss and smile together. Never, never. They are members in that district church. You will find a lot of tension. Between the pastor and the people. The language that comes is bitter language. They are smiting one another with words. We smite one another with loose. We smite one another with language. We are destroying fellowship because we have not prayed and get this thing me God is talking about. You find it among the workers. And because of that foundation of evil that has been laid, other evils will come in. You find gossiping. You find backbiting. You find envious words. You find jealousy. You find pride. You find everything together and they manifest in the language of the mouth. We are sanctified, that's what we say. But look at all the gossiping. Which is even which is even putting our salvation at doubt. And we talk and we say things and we discuss, then we will clean our face and we behave. There's no problem, my brother. Are we waiting for the coming of the Lord? If we are Check up how is it in our church? As a party, niece or the mimos who may woe, I will borrow any, I will borrow a badge, a tepafin barawaje, as a party, niece or the mima, a raconi, you do really gamban sele, e why e balatas of party nigger, otiwani, boyani, boyani, 
That because of this, here, I will, this is my region. I will go and be doing retreat in another place. I don't want them to know. I don't want, I, I will go to another region for my retreat. Because what is the problem? You say, I don't know what's the matter. The matter is that we are not sanctified. That you will find uh, members of this district and the members of that other district there, there will be a kind of, uh, I don't know what to call it, a kind of, uh, uh, unspoken kind of war, cold war, going on, and we are claiming sanctification. Where is sanctification there? Let people And we say things to cut down one another. We say things to injure one another. Okay, you said that. Okay, we have my own opportunity also. Oh, when also I have opportunity, maybe they say we should meet together or something. And then I want to talk. Then I say my own also. I pay him back in his own coin. Oh, I saw on you. But I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. If we go on like that, all our professional sanctification, the Bible says it's in vain. If we go on like that, all our professional sanctification, the Bible says it's in vain. The Bible says if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. We need to check up our experience today. Brothers, Jesus is coming. If he meets you and he meets any kind of these things in your life, you can't make heaven. No freedom in your heart. No joy in your heart. There is anybody on earth that you feel anything against? Only man, you that anybody, any kind, whether believer or sinner. But I feel that though you find this person, I just hate him. I don't like, I don't hate him, but I don't like him either. I just don't know what to say about him. And here you are, you are under tension. But my brother, the Lord searches the heart. If we claim to be sanctified, and there is a lot of all this kind of bitterness and sarcasm and criticism. And, and all these things in our behaviors and in our lives and we don't deal with them we are deceiving ourselves heaven's door will be shut in our face God forbid in Jesus name Brothers sisters I've done something good for him. Oh, when I rejoice, I say, Praise the Lord God has done good for my brother. It is evident that he will do good for me also. God has lifted him up. Oh, I say, Praise the Lord. If God could lift that my brother up, it means one day if I remain faithful, he will lift me up as well. I will not then go about and be saying things that will reduce, that will cut down that person to size, and then will reduce of the great grace of God upon the No, not at all. A believer will not do that. If we want to give all the glory to God, and I lift up my brother too. I join God, the ministry of God, in lifting him as far as God has lifted him. And then I wait for my tongue. Sanctification. Sanctification. We are in the church together. My sister now has no will of God in marriage. And because I have not known that will of God. Oh, then I begin to say, I don't know how they know this is their will of God. That uh, these people say will of God, will of God. And that, uh, is that the way this our sister? Is that the way she should do it? She should do it. Is that the way that brother should do it? In fact, I saw them 
Just before they declare that uh, will of God, I saw them two weeks before that time in the church and they were discussing together. Is it a sin to discuss together? If you are and then we begin to say things to leaders that will make them to suspect that brother and sister and uh, what are we looking for so that they will discipline them they will destroy the thing they will stop the thing they will not allow them to go ahead my brother is not marriage as important as heaven is marriage more important than making heaven and living with God eternally? Eh? Why must we, because of marriage, lose our deposit with God? When we really love the Lord, we love the brethren. We need to pray today. If we pray, God will do the work. Hey, you, 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 you see that thing in your heart that you know you, you shouldn't be there. You know yourself. And you, you have been wondering, why is this thing there? Don't wonder. Pray and get it out. Is down into your heart. Oh, Lord, you are this you are you are Only when you pay the price, you can be sanctified. Number three, pay the price for sanctification. Now, you have to pay attention. is a work of it has been paid for by Christ. The believer cannot qualify for it. Although it is by grace and it is free, you must qualify for it. They cannot qualify if you don't pay the price. And what's the price? Very simple. Number one, there will be a self-humbling and a confession of needs. The government makes drugs available. They say, this is free drug. Anybody who has this particular incurable disease, come and get this healing. This is a drug. You'll be healed. And there is an individual there that has that sickness. But he will not be humble to acknowledge, yes, I need that drug. That person will die without a, without a healer. Until we humble ourselves. And we have been in this deeper life for 20 years, 15 years. I need to be sanctified. Until we humble ourselves. And we say, yes, I am a leader. Yes, I am a worker. Yes, I am a preacher. But I need to be sanctified. Unless there is a self humbling, a confession of need before God, you will not get. Look at Isaiah. He said, Woe is me after prophesying. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Deep, deep prophecies of the future. Some of those prophecies are yet to be fulfilled now. Yet that man, he said, I'm a man of unclean leaves. I dwell in among the people of unclean leaves. He began to pray. A confession of need that lady please go back that please I, get her back I don't want you to make go back one sit down the word of God is very high and so holy. Get seated and get to heaven. I told you, you are the lady I spoke about yesterday. Now, you confess a need. And you say, Lord, I'm sorry for my... I know I have this problem. And then you begin to pray. And then price number two, there is a self-surrender. There is consecration. And you really humble yourself before the Lord. You present yourself a sacrifice. You say, God, I want cleansing in my heart. I consecrate myself. I bring myself before your altar. 
then after your, your humbling self humbling after confession of need that's number one self humbling and a confession of need number two self surrender and consecration you lay yourself before the Lord you say God I want your fire to fall on this my heart like a sacrifice in the Old Testament then number three there is strong supplication with concentration strong supplication with concentration you, you concentrate on that prayer you forget about that somebody is here somebody is there you go before the Lord you say God I want to get to heaven I want to get to the throne I want to climb on the final day I want to reign with Jesus I want to get to heaven I don't want to be a deeper life man on earth a hellfire candidate in hell you forget about whatever people may think or whatever people may say you look up to God like this and you throw your two hands like this Look at this heart. This place. There is something between these two hands that needs to be clean. So you say, God, I don't want to settle for second best. I want you to purge me through and through, cleanse me like, like David prayed. You pay the price you pay. Then you leave the rest in the hand of God. But you know when we pray nowadays, I'm waiting for pastor to say, in Jesus' name we pray. And you realize you need something Sanctification it is when you are going on the road. Oh God, you see my heart not sanctified. Sanctify me. Is that to get sanctification? Nimbo ba lo lo juwa lo lo wan rati vi kwa mama ni lo sadi mama lo sadi eso mi di eso mi. Eh but ini sadi mama ni eh. No, it's not like that. He said that everything Jesus died for. He shed his blood for. He paid the price for. You get on your knees. Or stand up wherever you are and you begin to pray. You forget about brother, sister, anybody is hearing. What's your business about that? Oh God, we pray for you. Allah kuri tabi Allah beni wengi bantu nzo kilo kame. God, you want to settle eternity with God. Oni se kwe lo lo and as you pray like that you see you suddenly come to his temple the message of the covenant who will give the light in the welcome and then he will come like a purifier of silver and he will purge he will refine he will cleanse he will renew he will put anyone inside you and when you get it you will know it when God purges your heart I don't need anybody to tell you yeah, yourself you will know all this one that you have to be going to pastor am I sanctified no you don't need to go to you will know yourself something, something definite will happen you will know it you will know it you will be sure of it there will be no doubt in your heart brothers and sisters we have come here to prepare for the Lord the Lord is coming the Lord is coming and he can come before the end of today and all these things that we have carried we have brought to the campground here this is month of transfiguration let us be transfigured before we go when we go back to church if Jesus tarries the people will see a change in our church life no suspicion again no distrust again no tension again nothing no bitterness again no envy again no jealousy no pride we're just brothers and sisters together the Lord is coming the Lord is coming. Oluwambo. And he's coming for you. Oluwambo. Will you be ready for him? So what? Don't do it. Will you be ready for him? Will you be ready for him? Say what? He's not coming for the animals. He's coming for you. He's coming for me. And he wants us to be ready. How do we get ready? We get ready when we pray. And you say, Lord, do a walk in my heart. That even my wife will know. My husband will know. My friends will know. My pastor will know. My members will know. Something happened to our brother our sister and God is ready now. God is ready are you ready that's so it God is ready but are you ready can he do the work in you or oh, your own is impossible he cannot stand you are so dirty he cannot clean he cannot like that he can clean you if you will rise up now and you will let us pray before the Lord in a serious manner not joking prayer 
not the one you are praying, you are counting kilometers, you know, going from place to place. You really expose everything before the Lord. And you pour your heart like water. And you don't hide anything. And you just bring everything out. Do you know God will do a work in your heart? Do you know God will do a work in your soul? Do you know God will do a work inside you? This moment, you will know something happened to you. Nobody did you know you are my father and I know you want me to be clean and I know you have prepared heaven for me and I want to prepare myself and I want to be qualified myself and so I, I don't hide anything I don't cover anything after all what can I hide from you what can I cover from you you expose everything you empty everything you empty everything God of grace, God of heaven, God of love, God of power, it comes down to you like this, and it works in your heart, it works in your soul, it works in your spirit, it doesn't deny you of anything, it puts the work of grace, the work of the blood of Jehovah, just purge and wash you, that is the work of grace, and without holiness you know, no woman shall see the Lord, no man shall see the Lord, in your church, in your location, in your family, in your family, in your family, think about your life, think about your heart, think about the work of grace, what Jesus has paid for, what Jesus has died for, what Jesus has shed blood for, why are you settling for, for, for less than that, and then we are, we are in the church, but we are not of one another, brother, sister, the Lord is coming soon, we need to get ready for the coming of the Lord, it's of your heart and of your mind and of your body and of your soul and of your feelings and of your thoughts and of your language it's an indication of your dressing of everything in your house everything in your home everything in your life that God just purges whiter than snow faithfully see that has called you faithfully see that has called you faithfully see that has called you he will do it Oh, what a faithful God. He oh, uh, shed his blood for your sanctification. Oh, shed his blood for your cleansing. Oh, sorry, Why don't you go to him? Oh, Sanctify my heart. So Punch my heart. So Remove everything that is there. Oh, that, that, that is unclean. Oh, just that man. is unholy. So and man. I just give myself to you. Oh, I surrender myself to you. Oh, I yield myself to you. Oh, I want to be like Christ. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be pure. I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. I want to be ready. Like a bridegroom prepared for a husband. Lord, I'm ready. I'm, ready. I'm willing to give myself to you. I will, I will, I will, I will to be clean. And then God will touch your heart. He touches your life. He touches your soul. He cleanses your heart. He makes you whiter than snow. Oh, brother. Oh, Lord. Oh, sister. Blood has been shed for you. For you to be clean. For you to be pure. Within and without. Don't let the blood of Jesus be in vain. Don't let the blood of Jesus be in vain. Has been paid for you to be pure. Therefore, don't let that price go without being available for you. Faithful is he that has called you. Faithful is he that has called you. He will do it.